Hey guys, this is Dana, and this is video number 40 in the Red Flags of a Narcissist series. Video number 40 is red flag number 40, which is history of addiction. And I should also say just trouble with addiction in general, because a lot of times they have a lot of active, ongoing addictions. So, um, and if you've ever heard the saying that addictions tend to run in threes, I really think that there's a lot of truth to this. So you might have experienced a, a narcissist with um, maybe a, a hist- maybe way back when they had uh, an issue with alcoholism, but now they, they're clean and sober. They no longer have that problem. But maybe now they tend to watch a lot of porn or they smoke or they're doing drugs or they're spending a lot of money or they're, they have a sex addiction of some kind. <clears throat> and, and I think really why there's such a, a high correlation between narcissism and addiction, there's a couple of reasons for this. A lot of addict behavior is very similar to narcissists behavior. It's what is basically what is problematic about a narcissist is exactly what is problematic about an addict. So it's the same. It's the lying. It's the manipulation. It's the stealing. It's the um, level of selfishness and entitlement and exploiting of others and lack of empathy and lack of remorse. <clears throat> So at the core, you're looking at kind of the same problems with personality. And at the core as well, it's the same kind of disempowering behavior to themselves and to others. And it's kind of just that ineffective ways of handling life. Um, you know, and, and with narcissists too, it's they are also very thrill seeking. So it's they because they feel so entitled to do whatever they want to do, they you know, it's kind of doing whatever they want to do whenever they want to do it as much as they want to do it with whomever they want to do it with. And so they might not see their problem, their, their addiction or their problem as an addiction. We might be the one that has the problem, like legitimately, because we're thinking to ourselves, okay, this is not normal for a person to, to, you know, go to all these different sex clubs and to have sex with all these different people and this really high risk behavior, um, or to be drinking and driving and have multiple DUIs and be totaling out cars. And so a lot of victims tend to think, you know, if this, if my, if this person, this narcissist can just get into rehab or if they can have enough therapy, then I can have a relationship, a nice, normal, balanced relationship with this person. That may or may not be the case because, you know, a person can be an addict and not necessarily be a narcissist, but they could also be an addict and be a narcissist. And then because there's so many overlapping traits there, it can be really hard to see what are you really dealing with? Are you dealing with a person that's got, you know, a personality disorder, um, or is it an addiction? And if they really did get help, that this would clear up and then they would eventually become more kind of healthy and grounded and balanced. It's a gamble. And so just kind of be aware of that. I would also look for, you know, is your experience with this person, is it problematic in many different ways outside of just their addiction? Um, and, and also to kind of ask yourself, you know, how long are you willing to spend holding on to hope? that this person's going to change and to get crystal clear with yourself, because even if they are just an addict and I put that in quotes, just an addict, that's bad enough. I mean, that's, that's very disempowering to themselves and to you. That's enough to really cause a tremendous amount of damage and destruction and danger to your life and to the life of your children or whoever else is involved with this person who has all of this very disempowering behavior. So to get really crystal clear with yourself of, how, you know, how long are you willing to hang in there and what kind of results or actions of the, for, from them would you need to see in order for you uh, to continue to stay? And keeping in mind, too, it's healthy and normal to have deal breaker behavior for other people that we have in our lives. I think a lot of us that are more on like the codependent side of the spectrum and in kind of interestingly enough, the word codependency first came from Alcoholics Anonymous and kind of the study of alcoholics. And then they found that alcoholics had the problem of being an alcoholic, but then they also had the other 
part side of that coin was that their partner tended to be very much an enabler and the partner was very focused on um, making excuses for them and justifying their behavior and minimizing it and denying it or blaming others or accepting excuses or kind of what have you and so codependent people and I'm going to do a whole series on this next month has a lot to do more with um, you know giving second and 20 second chances and always trying to fix the other person in the relationship. And if you're always trying to fix something, if there's always some sort of fire to put out in your relationship, then it's not healthy. And it's time you take a step back and it's okay for you to say, you know what? I signed up uh, for to be in a relationship, but I'm not going to be dragged through hell. So it's it's okay and it's healthy and it's normal to have to know where your line in the sand is. And so here's kind of the other part to that as far as codependency goes. I think a lot of us and myself included tend to really project um, ourselves onto the other people. And so we think, well, we would want somebody to help us, right? We would want somebody to try to get us help or to uh, be a good friend to us or to stick with us through all of this. But they're not us. And so if a person has really destructive behavior, it's really good that and important that you see their behavior for what it is and you don't make the mistake of thinking that they're like you and that because you might want to change and that you would want to have a healthy, balanced relationship that's full of like open and honest communication and trust and loyalty and all these things that this person wants the same. So again, really important to really make that distinction to see the person that you're with or whoever's being problematic in your life for who they are, not who you hope that they will be or that who you, um, you know, wish that they could potentially be down the road. Like dealing with what is, is, is very, very important. So, you know, again, lots of overlap between narcissists and, um, addicts and it's just important that you know when to walk away and or when to run <laughs> is the cases for a lot of these people so that's what I have for you I will be curious to know kind of what you guys have to say about all this you know as usual if you have any questions comments concerns frustrations feedback insights ideas you need some support you just want to say hi I'd love to hear from you best place to get a hold of me is my support group and as always lots of love to you guys you're not alone you're not crazy and you really can move forward and heal from this so take care I'll talk to you soon bye